All right, now we're going to get straight to the very important um, project information that we've been talking with folks in the county for quite some time, and I'm really happy that they were able to be here tonight. I think everybody from the county is under great demand right now because I actually had somebody write me back from the county and say, who from the county is coming to your meeting that you're not coming to this meeting? And I think, my, you see? Guys are popular. So uh, I wanted you, I really appreciate that you're here. I really do. And I've known really most all of you for a lot of years, a long time. So I, I'm really glad that you're here. And the folks that are here tonight are from primarily the, the projects that are impacting to our environment. And that's what they're here to talk about. And they've been around a long time working on things that are dear to our hearts, whether it was turtles or the birds or shoreline or big pass. These were folks that have been part of that. So I, I hope that you will make use of their good wisdom on this and also help them perhaps if there's some good ideas that you have and offer them in the professional and kind way that we've always done. So the first person that's going to be up here is Curtis Smith, and he is in, with Engineering and Planning Services. So Curtis, I'm going to let you lead this thing, so come on up. Thank you, Captain. I appreciate the gracious invitation to come and speak about something that is so dear to my heart, which is beach sand. And I'm here to talk to you all tonight about the South Siesta Key Beach Repair Project. And uh, I have a short presentation. I intend to go through the presentation very quickly. There's only five slides that have any substantive information on it. So when we get to question, we'll get to question and answer quicker that way. And it'll be easy to go back to slides if we need to refer to them. So just to start, we've got a couple of quick um, Quick slides about the project description. Um, the purpose of the project is to repair erosion damage to the South Siesta Key Beach Restoration Project area uh, that was incurred in 2016 from Hurricane Hermine. Uh, the plan is to place about 92,500 cubic yards of beach compatible sand throughout the project area uh, to return. Uh, the amount of sand that roughly was lost as a result of that storm's damage. Uh, we will use sand from a Department of Environmental Protection approved upland site, and it will be delivered by truck uh, with the access to the construction site being through Turtle Beach Park. Construction is slated to start this winter, and I'll talk with you more in a minute about why that is. Um, we have the good fortune to have access to uh, some FEMA emergency grant money, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Um, the her, uh, Hermine was a declared disaster, and they did offer disaster assistance funding to, uh, to communities with significant impacts from that storm. So they are, um, they'll cover. Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. I think, Next slide. Yeah. Could could you also speak into the microphone? Yes. I'm sorry. Is that it? Okay. General Is it better? Yes. Okay, terrific. 100%. All right, great. Um, they'll cover about 75% of the cost of the project, and we will also see uh, state reimbursement uh, funding for a portion of the remainder and our tourist development tax um, Funding will cover the remainder there. There's no intent to. Okay, I got to get the guys. Um, if you're online, please go mute. All right, thank you. There's no intent to um, to charge the assessment okay. district for this work. Um, the goal is to complete the work quickly to meet a very, very tight grant deadline. Um, the work. Uh, the work will be done uh, Monday through Friday. The, the, the sand delivery, the trekking will be done during the day, uh, Monday through Friday. There might be some on-beach work on Saturdays, but that's something the contractor will have to ask us for permission to do uh, specifically. 
Um, so if we can go to the next slide, sure. I just want to uh, show you just the general layout. The picture that you see behind me is the uh, shows the limits of the 2016 uh, nourishment project. This was that was the second phase of sand placement in the South Siesta project area. So um, just about where the just about to the right of the yellow box is the area around Turtle Beach Park, and and you can see. Uh, it's kind of small, and I apologize for that, but you can see Midnight Pass Road come down the spine of the island. So, as I said, the uh, goal is to place sand throughout that project area um, because there was more damage in the southern part of the project. More sand will be put in the southern part, and less sand will be put in the northern part. But the goal overall is to is to kind of smooth out the profile. Um, the Gulf does, well, oceans don't like bumps in the shoreline and uh, they'll tend to, to straighten them out on their own. So anytime we do a project like this, we wanna try to give a smooth shoreline uh, to the area. And if we go to the next. Good. Um, hopefully this, this is visible to y'all. Uh, this is just the general layout on the uh, at the project site, um, you can see this dashed line with the arrows um, is the the truck haul route, or at least the last portion of it. The trucks would come onto the island; they would come down Midnight Pass. That's the road to access that that beach, and then they would come into the park, and uh, they would access the beach through the dune uh, just south of. That, that first entrance to the boat ramp. Um, and they'll do a three point turn there so they can back onto the beach, uh, deposit their sand, and then those trucks will leave. There will be some off-road dump trucks that will be on the beach and they'll work with a track hub, uh, track hub operator to load those trucks. And then they'll take those trucks down to the far end of the project. And they'll most likely put their sand start way out at the end and then work their way back in. So this is very general. This is a preliminary drawing. So you know we'll have another set of plans that that may screw that up a little bit. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. Just wanted to give you some quick information on the general timeline. This timeline is kind of go is going to work backward. You'll see this in a moment. The FEMA grant that we have expires on June 30th of next year. Uh, we were hoping for more time. We, we lobbied for more time, and this is what they were willing to give us. Uh, sea turtle nesting season, of course, begins on May 1st. So our contractor will have until the end of the day on April 30th to finish on-beach work. Uh, we are allowing 60 days to construct the project, including site restoration. Uh, so backing this all the way up, it means given our processes, we'll need to advertise the construction bid in late December or early January. And uh, we also uh, are planning a public meeting on this project for early January. Our fact sheet says, says December, and we just weren't able to make that happen. So um, we have the request in, and I'm working with our communications people to plan it. Hopefully it'll be, you know, it'll be either the first week of January or the second week. It's going to depend on availability of venues. So that is the end of the, of the presentation. Uh, we can go to question and answer now, and I do want to thank you in advance for participating. How many trucks per day will we present? The goal will be about 100 trucks a day. Do you have people on roads that are partly closed by construction? Right. <laughs> they, uh, the, so which projects are you referring to? Midnight Pass and Beach Road. So Midnight Pass Resurfacing, I think, is in the northern part of the island. Correct. 
and the roundabout won't start construction until I think December December of next year, okay. I believe. Um, I know people have mentioned the hotel projects. They're still in litigation, and they haven't submitted any paperwork to the planning department. So there's time. We're going to be in and out by the end of April. I mean, there might be a couple of weeks in May where we're finishing up, maybe you know, repaving if if a dump truck chews up some of the asphalt. Thank you. You're welcome. That's yes. Ladies' department starting December fourth. Which pro I'm sorry. It's called the Lays, the um, construction starting on December 4th. I thought it was in Malay because it starts in January. It'll, it'll start in March. In March. Okay. So this project is starting at, from um, Stickney up until Shadow Lawn. Mm -hmm. so Which project? So is that a... 250 days. Yeah. For, for two months. Can you all just wait for a second? I think he doesn't know about that project. And right. we're going to speak to that. So okay, can I ask a the question then? Um, will this area that you're talking about rebuilding be affected if they open up the pass? Don't know. I don't, I don't have any way to answer that question. <laughs> The op opening up the pass is something that would probably take years to work out. And this is a very near term, near term project to replace the volume of sand that was lost in, in uh, from a particular storm. Okay. So the it's beach by its very area. nature is sacrificial. The sand does wear away over time. And so we know that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I have a question. So, Thanks. Monday through Friday, we'll be doing the hour. Um, typically, if that's not worked out yet, typically in our contracts, we'll say seven to seven. Um, we'll, uh, we don't know yet if it's going to be slightly less, okay, so, but it could be. Second question I have is that you mentioned that your advertised construction bid in late December. For a project that's going to start in March, is there a uh, have you done? Is there availability? It sounds like sand's available, but mm -hmm. do you even know if there's contractors that can even bid on this job? Yes, according to our design consultant, he's been in contact with a number of contractors that do this sort of work. He's aware of, of I think we said at least four that have availability and interest. Yes, sir. Curtis, thank you. So. The 370000 that was spent on engineering uh, approval a couple months ago, that's part of what the state and or tourist district would reimburse it to the county, correct? That's part of what FEMA and the state grant program will reimburse. And, yes. and, uh, and however they divide that up and determine that, I guess it's probably unknown. But the bottom line is that the traditional county coffers are spending one dime on this, correct? We will spend some tourist development tax money. Which I, in my mind is different. Okay. Okay. Right. It's not general fund spending. Right. Right. Good. Thank you. And the assessment district won't be won't be charged for this work. Yes, sir. Thanks. Welcome. Yes, sir. So so what why are we actually putting more sand there? I mean, it's eroded, mm -hmm. but Mother Nature will probably put sand back eventually and probably take it back and put it back. Why? We, what is the urgency or why do we need that, to do it? Can we restate right. that into the microphone? I'm yes. sure there's a lot Everybody. of people that couldn't hear you. Doing so. so the question is, Thank you. why are we putting sand back on the beach? It erodes over time, sand comes and goes, so why are we proposing to do this? And that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. And we do have uh, we do have beaches in this county that's, that's going to behave that way. Uh, the Turtle Beach area, the area that's south of, of Point of Rocks, behaves somewhat differently than those other areas. And it behaves differently than Crescent Beach does. Um, Crescent Beach, of course, has that beautiful band that comes out of Big Pass. Um, and it's work, you know, it works its way over eons. It worked its way all the way from the southern Appalachians down through our rivers and our bays, and it's wound up on that wonderful beach. 
Um, that sand works its way down to point of rocks where it is then deflected out into the Gulf. And for some reason, the Gulf does not move that sand around point of rocks back onto the island so that it can continue on down the southern part of the island. Um, when Midnight Pass was open in the early 80s, there was an edge shoal that acted as that acted sort of like Point of Rocks did to help slow the movement of sand down that shoreline. That feature doesn't exist, so there's a net loss of sand on the southern part of the island. Uh, it uh, it has eroded. But by the time we did the first nursing, and I think it was 2007, 2008. Um, we'd already had some some storm damage just from tropical storms that had eaten all the way into Blind Pass Road. Uh, that, you know, we had lost the Seawood Lane pavement. Had to go out there and do emergency work to shore it up. Um, and so, the beach nourishment projects help you to protect public and private infrastructure in areas where the shoreline is threatened by erosion. And it's a more natural alternative. So we have what they call a net deficit of sand movement in that part of the island. Different from, different from Crescent Beach, different from the other islands in the community. So it needs, it needs help from us so that it doesn't erode and then just keep eroding. So there is structure there that that is in danger. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. It's not Correct. just there's buildings. Beach. Correct. Okay. Correct. There are buildings or condominiums or okay. homes and, and of course the public road and the like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great question. Let me ask this here. Yes. Uh, so will they be putting sand from south of the point of rocks? <laughs> Project, can we go back to the um, which one? The first of the graphics. This one. So I think it's like yes, that's it. Excuse me for just a moment. Yeah, repeat the question. I will. I want to thank you so much for having bottles of water. I forgot. To put, <laughs> There's more. <laughs> I forgot to put mints in my pocket this morning. Um, okay, so. The question is about how far along the shoreline will we be depositing sand? So that's what this graphic is, is showing. I know it's hard to see, but the, the uh, project area that we have state and federal permits to manage goes, uh, goes just up, just barely up into the Sanderling Club rock revetment system not very far, but just a little bit. And it goes all the way down to about 250 feet or so south of that last house on the south part of the key. It used to be the Tolkett house. That's how I always knew of it. And I know someone else has bought it and I don't know their names, but it goes down just a little bit past that house. So uh, as I said earlier, because Hermine's damage was mostly along that southern part of the project. It's had a, a greater impact. More of the sand will go there and less of the sand will go further north. Curtis, you mentioned it's DEP approved sand. Yes. Is it going to look like the existing sand? No. How is it going to be different? Wider? Yeah. It will be lighter. I'm not going to say quieter. It will be lighter. Um, and it will be it will be very free of silt size material. Free let me let me yeah. Now let me let me qualify this. I'm a geologist, and so I know better than to say it will be free like like I can guarantee a hundred percent. But it's going to be, you know, it, it can't have more than 5% silt. And um, we're going to propose more than, it can't have more than 3% silt. And, you know, we got to work this, work through this with the agencies. Does it not have more than 3% silt? 
Yeah. Now we'll we'll work through. You know, we just submitted our permit application, so there's a conversation with the state and then and with the Army Corps. Um, but these are you know these are um, characteristics that the the sand mines in the state of Florida, the ones that are DEP approved, they can deliver this kind of material that is beach compatible. It's relatively free of fine grade material, and it's relatively free of shell. And it is, it is quite a bit lighter usually than what you see on the beach now. Is this part of why dredging was a bad idea in your mind? In this case, the main, the main reason for not dredging is because of the volume of sand. 92,000 yards of sand is, is almost exactly 10% of what we put on the beach when we did the initial restoration in 2008. And it's not economically feasible to, to get an ocean going dredge to go out and get that small a volume of sand. The mobilizations for those boats these days are four to five million dollars just to get the boat to come to your community. I've got two questions. Yes. All right. The first question is, how is the traffic going to be mitigated for 100 trucks for the 7 to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.? All right. So the question is, how is the additional traffic from the trucks going to be mitigated? So 100 trucks a day. We have looked at the traffic count data from from the Department of Transportation or Department of Transportation. And that amount of truck traffic is about an additional 1% over, over the counts right now. The main thing is to make sure that we're holding our contractor responsible, that we're holding our contractor responsible for metering the truck traffic onto the island. Uh, we're going to want them to have a staging area where if the trucks start coming hot and heavy, where they can have them pull off the road and wait so that they can be released in an orderly fashion. It doesn't mean nobody can guarantee that there won't be from time to time, there won't be, you know, some trucks bunch up. But our job is to make sure that the contractor does not do that and acts in as conscientious a, a, a manner as possible because those trucks are big and those and, and and they need to drive safely. And the second question was on the turtles. How will the turtles react to the different sand? This sand is, oh, so the question is how will the turtles react to the sand? Uh, the turtles should react fine to it because when DEP approves the sand mines as having beach compatible sand, that's one, of, that's one of the biggest characteristics that they're looking at is, can they produce a sand that we know sea turtles nest in effectively? So that's, DEP will not permit us to use a sand that is not from one of their approved sources. We wouldn't want to do that. Um, so our expectation is that they will, they will react well to it. They've reacted well to the gray sand. So they should react well to the sand also. Yes, sir. Can you put your finger back up where you show the uh, Turtle Beach Road and uh, Midnight Pass in, in the way the bus back in the night there? Trying to get it back. Yeah. Can you speak louder, please? Yes. Yeah. 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 What, what, what what to the next big figure you just said? The one that's more localized into the yes. park? Yeah. Yes, so that would be the next one. Okay. okay. The, point, the point I want to make here is the analysis that we just discussed in terms of the impact on traffic. And this is the point. This picture you have up there demonstrates that where I think it's going to be a very serious problem for people that live on the south end of the city. If you look at the intersection of the midnight pass and Turtle Beach Road, you're going to have a truck right there. You're going to have trucks. I talked to a friend of mine who does this work up in Wisconsin, this kind of exact work up in Wisconsin. 
the, a, a good estimate of the time it will take for a truck to come down. You have an opening wide enough so say two trucks could be operating on the sand coming in. It's about 10 minutes. Okay, that means six trucks per hour. Right, okay. right there. Now, what's going to happen is your trucks are going to back up. If they back up back down that midnight pass, people can't see, they can't get down there to start to do it. But moreover, you won't get your hundreds a day because that's your, that, that's what I was trying to say the other day. And we went face to face on this. Your, your, your trucking company is going to have to analyze this site. They're also going to have, have to analyze okay. the fact that you're doing this in the corner. So, Jim, what's the question? Yeah, my question is you ain't going to meet it, meet it in this time. Frame. Okay. I don't think you'll get a trucker to do this, but don't tell people that this is all about the you know, traffic analysis, it's all about the, the argument you just made. Because the argument needs to be can you deal with that situation? That and the fact that you're going to end up with stop and go traffic with those trucks trying to get back down to midnight pass is a, is a big problem. And, you, and I'm sure your, your, your trucker will analyze all of this if they do it right, but you ain't going to get it in that amount of time. Okay. It's going to work. So, so, could I paraphrase it and a follow up question? So, what happens if you can't finish in that period of time? Terms of letting the turtle nesting go on, and what what will happen if it's not completed? When we bid the project, uh, we will have liquidated damages attached to to the time frame, and if the contracting community uh, doesn't have the confidence that they can do that work in the amount of time that we have, then they know they'd be bidding on a project where they're going to be they're going to be done. And so we are going to allow the contracting community to analyze the situation and take a look at it and decide whether it's a risk that they can accept. I want to just make one other question. One other point. The impact on the business community down there, the trucks sitting on that corner during the peak terror season, and the problem with people I used to live on lying mass, for those trucks doing what you're talking about, you're, you're basically wiping out people with. You're making it very difficult for people that are uh, in, in the condos down there, Fisherman Cove, Fisherman Haven, and people that live down on Black Pass. For that matter, I'm on the mainland south of that. Okay. Those trucks are going to back up at that corner for sure. Right. Trying to make the right in. And you can't get around it, you can't see. It's a blind corner. It's going to be a mess. And, and, and I think you need, I know you did this one because you had money to work with and get this job. But you got, you're also affecting in a ma major way people that live down there, residents, tourists, and businesses. And those involve lots of dollars too. So that analysis needs to get done. And I don't think it's been done because if it were done and done properly, we wouldn't do this. That's my okay. Point. That's okay. great. Thank you for sharing. Okay. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. What exactly is the FEMA grant? I've heard four and I've heard five. It's roughly four. And did, 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 did today, I know they wanted to have this all cleared up by the, the deadline you talked about, but originally this was slated for years out. What what happened? Just, I'm just curious, what happened on FEMA's end where they said, now uh, you're, you're against it, take it or leave it? Our understanding is that this is the last Hurricane Hermine project in the nation. <laughs> right. And they would like to move on. They want to close the books. They want to exactly. They want to close the books on that disaster. But there was there was a chunk of time where this was slated for many years out. It's it's Something taken many, it's taken many years to have the grant discussion with FEMA. Mm -hmm. We didn't get the award until I believe it was last year, and we didn't get our latest time extension until early this year. You're welcome. And the last comment I got was we'll have a point of contention also at Sticky Point and Midnight Pass, that turn. With just as Jim said, there's a bottleneck one way and there'll be a bottleneck there too. I just want to get it on record. That's all. <laughs> Understood. Understood. And clearly, yes. there are going to be concerns about congestion. 
Yes. Um, there's no way around it. Jim, I didn't mean to start it up again. No. I sat and watched, you know, the big ship out there putting the sand on barges right. and the barges coming in. Instead of shipping, instead of trying to do this trucking, which I frankly think you can't do it exactly, have you looked at the option of, of having sand put on barge and use the, use the barge mechanism? All right, so the question is, have we looked at alternate methods to bring the sand out to the project? In specific, have we looked at, at delivering the sand to a port and having it brought out by barge? And we have not looked at that. FEMA has uh, FEMA has tied its grant to a truck haul project. This is the project that they will that they will pay three quarters of, uh, of, and there is there's not time for us to go back and argue that with them. Curtis, yes. I've got one question. Yes. Um, I know the county has approved the engineering contractor to do the get package and apply for the permits and that. When is has it been approved to go out for a bid? And if not yet, when do you expect commission approval to go out for contractor bids? Uh, authorization for construction was added earlier this year to the project. So we do have direction from the board to take it to construction. So there's no more board reviews. Well, uh, of the contract, it's of the construction contract itself, yes. Okay. When will that be? That hopefully will be in late January or earliest February. But you don't have to ask their permission to go out for bidding. No, we have that permission now. Yes. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, guys? Uh, I want to go back to the picture with the, with the longer, uh, the longer view of the, of the beach. Yes, one one slide back. Yeah. So, are you saying that? That whole stretch from, like you said, up by Sandra Lake, all the way down, you know, past where, you know, I guess Fisherman's Cove, those condos down there, that whole stretch will get some sand. It'll just be distributed. Am I correct? It'll go as far as that northern spot all the way down to the southern spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. 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 It's not going all the way down to where the pass was yeah. when it was closed. It's right. going about 270 feet south of that. Right there. Yeah, that, that's pretty, yeah. that's the well, that's way. right. It was it was pretty far north in the park when yeah. when the action was taken. Yeah, yeah right. and I guess the last thing as a as owner, uh, I'm encouraged. Are you trying to make something happen? Because the reason why people come to Florida is the sun and the sand. That's where they come to see us to eat. So I'm glad we're putting money into it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else, folks? Thank you very much for your time and for your participation. Thank and you. Your thoughtful questions. And we will have a public meeting in early January. And as soon as I know the date, it'll get advertised. So thank you again. Y'all have a great day. Okay, thank you.